Good evening once again everyone, Hell's Unicorn here again, and I am going to do some reflecting on the current yet ever-evolving field of candidates that is emerging in the Republican Party. There were three events of note that occurred this weekend that I just wanted to give a little bit of a, my own take on before I get down to brass tacks here. The first of these is the fact that Donald Trump has bowed out of the race before even getting into it. I haven't given much uh, attention to this particular topic because I was pretty sure from the get-go that Donald Trump was not going to run. Now, as to what his motivations were for injecting himself into the debate the way he did, there's a number of possibilities. It might have simply just been to raise ratings for his own show, and you know what? Cash is king, so if you're going to get a little attention for yourself, why not do it on the circus that is the mainstream media? In my opinion, Donald Trump has actually did us all a service in that he very successfully demonstrated that the vast majority of news networks are very much pro-Obama, and they make very little secret of it. Then again, there could have been other motivations. He may have had a genuine, deep uh, feeling of concern as to the direction of this country, and I think he wanted to inject himself into the discussion specifically to get things back on point. The truth is, is that the Republican Party, although they were handed a pretty substantial congressional victory just about a little under a year ago, they were being very weak need and very passive in terms of the economic health of this country. Now, Donald Trump comes from a little bit of a different school of thought if we accept uh, what he said verbatim in that he comes more from a populist direction rather than a free market perspective. He's kind of more of a mixed economy kind of guy, and that would probably appeal more to the more middle-of-the-road independents and moderate Republican types, but it doesn't really do much for me as a libertarian. But regardless to what his motivation was, I was pretty well convinced that he wasn't running, and I was basically right. He did something similar back maybe about 12 or 16 years ago, and everybody was of the opinion that he, he might actually run, and of course it never came to fruition, even though he did give a lot of speeches, particularly uh, speeches uh, talking to Cuban Americans about uh, Castro and other related uh, current events at the time in Cuba. Moving on now. Good old Mike Huckabee. Man, did his people and my people have some real nasty run-ins during the 2007 primary and lead-up to the 08 election. I'm actually breathing a very heavy sigh of relief that he's not running because, quite frankly, I have always harbored a little bit of fear over the possibility that he might actually win the election. And my opposition to Huckabee definitely cuts into theological territory. Mike Huckabee, in much the same respect as George W. Bush, is a dispensationalist, premillennialist Christian. Ergo, he is very pro-Zionist. And he's also, in many respects, a Dominion theologian, which means that in addition to believing that we need to intervene on Israel's behalf on everything and we need to kowtow to APAC at every chance we get because it is our duty as servants of God to protect his so-called chosen people. He has also stated that he affirms the what I would call the hyper-conservative -conserv social stances of trying to legislate Christian morals from the federal government, something which someone of my persuasion has been very much opposed to, because when you have a system of government stru structured the way the federalist system is, you don't get a model conducive with traditional primitive Christianity. You get something more along the lines of tyrannical British crown Anglicanism. And even though Mr. Huckabee is a Baptist, I think ultimately that kind of system is what would result from a presidency such as his, not to mention that our foreign policy 
would essentially be maintained in its current status, if not made much worse. At the end of the day, Contrary to what many people think, there are a number of different schools of thought with regards to Christian politics in America, and it doesn't cut down into two simply divided camps as Christian liberalism and Christian conservatism. It's actually a, a good deal more complex, and anybody who is in any way curious as to how it is that you can get di such diverse opinions as mine versus others including, you know, even the distinct views of Ron Paul, it would be a good idea to read up on some of the differing views regarding, excuse me, regarding church eschatology, because it'll give you a very clear idea of exactly where America is politically and why historically America was very different in its earlier days, despite being heavily Christian dominated. It had to do very specifically with how people interpreted scripture, how people defined clear and concise Christian orthodoxy and dogma, and how the politics of different colonies and then later states were divided up in such a way that people were free to practice their own religion and yet also sovereign enough to separate themselves out from each other so you didn't have clashes of differing theologies, which is something that has been very much at the forefront of 20th century American politics. You have different denominations of Christianity, all of them either making alliances of chance with each other or being at each other's throat, and it has little to do with believing or not believing in God and everything to do with the concept of state sovereignty and the fact that people from culturally very different areas of this country are being forced to share one overarching culture of federalism, which I personally utterly oppose as it exists today. Maybe a different federalism more in line with the early days of this country post-Constitution would be a step up, but I am definitely more of a confederal thinker in many respects. I definitely like the idea of states having a both a general concept of sovereignty and also the ability to secede if stuff like the madness that's going on in the Middle East continues. What basically that would mean is I would support states seceding so that they could pull any troops that they have contributed to the national army out and wash their hands clean of the insanity that Washington has been involved in. Yes, my friends, secession is a lot more than just simply breaking from the Union because you want to keep slaves. Learn it and live it. And now moving on to the third and probably the most auspicious event, which was the recent gap, excuse me, gaff that soon to be uh, lower tier candidate Newt Gingrich had over the weekend. My chief criticism about the Paul Ryan plan is that it's a band-aid on a broken leg. It's not going to do enough to address the full problem. We have to have a complete shift in our entire spending paradigm, and we do need to address the problem of excessive militarism and all the money that's being poured into the toilet in other parts of the world via conflict. It's not alone in and of itself going to completely balance our budget. There's a lot of domestic issues that also need to be addressed, but we need to make some serious priorities. And when you measure throwing money into bombs that are going to blow up and then be gone a day later versus giving people food stamps, I'll, I'll take the food stamps before I take the bombs, although truth be told, I don't like either. I think that food stamps are the antithesis of a culture based on a solid worth work ethic and solid competition. Food stamps are what disabled people should be getting, not for people who just either don't feel like working or who can't find work because the government has destroyed all the jobs, which is basically what we have going on right now. Newt Gingrich essentially decided for some cockeyed reason to attack the official Republican Party stance from the left. 
why in the heck he would actually think that this would do him any good is beyond me. But to tell you the truth, honestly, I can't really be bothered to care all that much since I don't support the guy and I pretty well never will. Absent him having a full out conversion and accepting the libertarian uh, ideology. And I figure if Bob Barr can do it, just about anybody could do it with the proper motivation. And I think uh, maybe with a humiliating defeat, Newt Gingrich might learn a thing or two, and he might learn to accept a more rational view of American politics, and he might also learn when to speak and when to keep his opinions to himself. Now, on the other hand, I think the interviewer uh, that he uh, ended up uh, performing this gaffe in front of was also very unreasonable and asked some very idiotic questions pertaining to uh, Newt Gingrich's uh, alleged racism, which I'm sorry that I grew out of the whole you're a racist because you disagree with me BS when I was 14 years old. So I'm not terribly impressed. I think that CNN, NBC, and all these other networks are a bunch of lying, conniving little weasels and to watch them is to insult your own intelligence. So why candidates feel the need to appear on these sh on these stations when they're obviously hostile to them is anybody's guess. Although Ron Paul always seems to handle himself very well in this capacity because he's at home with dealing with these people. He knows how to deal with these people because he deals with them in Congress. He has some viewpoints that are in common with them and so much so that he can come off not looking like a bad guy even when you have complete douchebags like Rachel Maddow suggesting that they're racist. So where to take all of this? Of all three of these announcements, the most significant is probably the Huckabee announcement, although the Trump announcement is also pretty substantial. I think that the field is wide open, and I think that all of the naysayers that are saying that Ron Paul doesn't have a chance right here and right now are jumping the gun. When the full press corps is on the attack and Ron Paul is getting savage to the point that he's stuttering in interviews, then we can worry. But for right now, he's holding his own, and he definitely has a shot. Might not be the best shot we can hope for. I mean, it would obviously be much better if we had news networks that were actually fair, which I don't know if we've ever had those. And if we had an American populace that was reasonably well-informed instead of a bunch of tripped-out, brain-dead zombies who think that Jon Stewart is real news. But I don't know. I guess at the end of the day, you just have to work with what you got. That's my piece for your Reckonridge. With prudence to myself and benevolence to all of you, good evening.